Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, my name is Brendan, and I hope all of you guys are having a great day, no matter where you are from, because there's a lot happening in the world of crypto at the moment. Now, most recently, Mazars Group announced that they are going to be suspending all of their work with all of their crypto clients. And this will affect some pretty big names like Binance, Crypto.com, and even KuCoin. And it all has to do with over collateralization. So we'll be breaking down this article in its entirety and taking a look at really how these crypto companies are going to be getting affected. But on top of this, Trump launched an NFT collection, and there's a pretty decent sized hack on the Solana based project called Radian, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And if you're not, don't worry, we're going to be breaking down exactly what is happening over here, because nearly $2 million in a couple of different cryptocurrencies were hacked during this exploit. Now, as you can imagine from all this news, the crypto market isn't responding too well to it. Uh, and Bitcoin alone is down about 3% on the day. And a couple of the altcoins are down between 3 to 5% on the day. So if any of this interests you at all, make sure you stick around for the entire length of the video, as there will be important information discussed the entire way through. Let's talk about the whole Mazar situation first, because if you're not familiar with the Mazars group, they're one of the main groups inside of crypto that goes in and does these proof of reserves audits and these proof of reserve assessments for some of the biggest crypto companies in the world. And with them announcing that they're not going to be working with any of these clients anymore, like KuCoin, like Crypto.com, like Binance, the main reason for concern here is number one, with everything that's happening with FTX, they don't want to get caught up in a situation like that. And number two, they actually went in and upon looking at Binance's proof of reserves of Bitcoin, they said that Bitcoin reserves on Binance were actually over collateralized. And they said something very similar for KuCoin. And they said that KuCoin was not only over collateralized on Bitcoin, but it was over collateralized on Bitcoin, Ethereum, USDT, and USDC reserves. Now, the unique thing here is that everyone was expecting their crypto.com report to look very similar to Binance or even KuCoin's. But surprisingly, Mazer's assessment of Crypto.com's reserves found them to be fully backed at a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, if you don't know why I'm laughing, a couple weeks ago, we did a video on Crypto.com's uh, proof of reserves report, and we saw that their second largest holding of assets wasn't Ethereum, it wasn't USDT, it wasn't USDC, it was Shiba Inu. It represented nearly, I think, a quarter of their portfolio or over a quarter of their portfolio. Uh, was all in Shiba Inu holdings, which was wild. And I was saying, I hope this isn't true, but it looks like their Shiba Inu report is not only true, but they might not, they actually might be in one of the best places of all these other crypto exchanges. But despite this, Mazars is coming in saying, hey, despite, you know, even crypto.com looking like they're in a good spot here, we don't want to mess with any of these companies at all. Again, we want to just let everything boil over. This is not a permanent thing, which seems to be a very popular misconception right now, is that everyone thinks that Mazars Group will never work with a crypto company again. And all that this is, is just a temporarily pause or just a halt of how they are working with these crypto companies. So I'm sure once everything blows over, you'll probably see them come back in. They took down a lot of the links for a lot of their previous assessments um, to just kind of further this idea that they are bridging themselves away from crypto for the time being. Um, we could even see those return, but it seems like they're, they're really just scared of what's happening with the FTX situation and the way that that is unfolding. They want to make sure that they are safe and compliant. And, you know, from what we can tell in the news, that is the main reason why they want to get away from all these companies. So how are companies like Binance and Crypto.com and KuCoin going to be affected? Well, Binance looks like it's going to be the most affected of all of this, even though the report said that KuCoin is the most over collateralized of the three. And in a funny way, you know, maybe I'll flash up an image on the screen here, but if you go to the Vegas odds for the exchanges that are most likely to blow up, I believe crypto.com was one of the most like highly anticipated exchanges to blow up. But what this report actually does is say crypto.com actually might be one of the safest. Now, this isn't speaking about their revenue. This isn't speaking about their liabilities. This is just saying that they actually have the assets that they say they have. Now we can't see into Binance's like 
annual report sheets or anything like that because they don't have to report that to the US. But from a sheer one-to-one -one backing of assets, you know, oddly enough, crypto.com's in a good spot. So I don't wanna beat this into the ground. I don't wanna beat a dead horse here, but quite the unique report for, for exchanges as they're coming out. Now, flipping to the complete opposite side of the spectrum here, former President Donald Trump launched an NFT collection. And although it was highly criticized, it has been wildly successful. So love him or hate him, the collection as a whole started out for around $99 a piece. There's about 45,000 of them at the initial mint, with about 1,000 of them being labeled as a rare NFT. Now, the base NFTs that were minted for $99 are now being sold for more than double that at around $230 per NFT, and this comes out to around 0.19 Ethereum. Now for these rare NFTs, these ones are selling at anywhere between six Ethereum and 20 Ethereum per rare NFT. And this comes out to well over $20,000. So if you were partaking in this and you got one of these rare ones, congratulations on making a ridiculous turnaround price in less than 24 hours on your NFT. But this just goes to show that number one, NFTs are still very much alive and that anything is possible in the world of NFTs. So we're not gonna go too in depth on this one. I just figured it was at least making it into the video and talking it about it from a news standpoint because it was quite the surprise. I don't think anyone really expected it to see this level of success uh, because celebrity NFT mints are like completely hit or miss. A lot of them flop, a lot of them go nowhere, a lot of them never even fulfill their initial mint price, but this one certainly blew it out of the water. Now let's wrap things up by looking at Radium, what happened here and how this hack actually happened. So if you're unfamiliar with Radium, they are a Solana-based project, and what happened here is, we'll actually do a direct quote from Radium themselves, they said that the initial understanding is that the owner authority was taken over by this attacker, but the authority has been halted on the automated market maker or AMM and FARB programs for the time being. So they're kind of just halting stuff. They're trying to figure out what happened here, but it looked like it was an issue with some of their liquidity pools and someone essentially went in there, was able to be a malicious actor and take roughly $2 million in a couple of different cryptocurrencies. So this really hurts the Solana ecosystem. Again, Radium is one of the prominent projects, in my opinion, on Solana. And with this happening, it kind of digs the grave further for Solana. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we said, you know, is Solana dead? And the answer was not yet. But if stuff like this is going to continue to hack and to, to happen on Solana, it certainly doesn't help its case because Solana is drastically down bad from where they were even a year ago, even a couple of months ago. They've lost a significant amount of developers, a lot of TVL, and a lot of projects on their network are starting to look for other places to go and call their home. And so with Radium being one of the ones that is sticking around, they are now being hit hard with what looks to be a pretty significant attack for the Radium network. Now, granted, their total, uh, I believe their total amount locked, their total uh, TVL was around $45 million. So this wasn't like it was like a quarter of the pool or half of the pool or anything like that, but it was still a good chunk. Again, they don't have this ridiculous amount of TVL like a lot of these other projects that have hundreds of millions or billions in TVL. Radium still is a fairly small project. So with Solana being in a really difficult spot and now Radium going from a hard spot to an even more difficult spot, this kind of puts even more pressure on Solana. So does things look or do things look good for Solana right now? I would say no. In fact, the more that stuff like this happens to the projects that are trying to support Solana, the harder that Solana scalability will be. Now, I still don't think that this is like the hammer coming down on Solana and this is going to be the, the straw that broke the camel's back. But it is just saying we're adding a significantly larger or more amount of straws to the camel's back, if that makes any sense. 
Um, but things are just essentially getting more difficult for Solana. And that's the point that I wanted to make here, is that not only is Solana seeing a lot of hard times at the moment and them losing TVL, but also the projects that are trying to support Solana on the Solana network are also being attacked. And they're seeing a hard time as well from this. So we'll see how Solana reacts. You know, maybe this just causes more developers and more projects to move elsewhere. Maybe Radium wants to go somewhere else. Maybe it's the death of Radium. You know, personally, I don't think so. Uh, from what we can see from the team, they still have a lot of TVL. The team is still working hard to get this resolved. And maybe they can get it resolved entirely. But as all of this is happening, crypto prices are certainly falling. We see Bitcoin's down almost 3% on the day. And a lot of the altcoins are down even more than that as well. In fact, if we want to go take a look at BNB, BNB is down nearly 6.5% on the day. So these altcoins that are being affected by all of this are seeing a reflection of this on their price charts. And if we want to go take a look at Solana, Solana is down almost 8.5% on the day. So a lot of these cryptos that we are seeing in the news are directly having a price impact from the rough times that we're seeing at the moment. But you know, regardless of all of this, we've mentioned in a lot of the of the videos about how much money is still flowing in the crypto, despite all of this bad news ha that is happening out there. And the crypto industry is certainly moving forward. And despite certain projects being attacked or certain projects seeing harder times than others, the, indus the industry as a whole is still extremely strong right now. So if you want to stay in touch with everything that's happening in the world of crypto and all the news as it gets released, definitely consider hitting that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel a lot, and I make sure to publish multiple videos a week on everything that is happening. So if you wanna stay up to date, I think this is your number one place to do it. But that being said, everyone, we're gonna wrap this video up. I hope all of you enjoyed, and I will see all of you in next week's video.